Today we're going to talk about standing waves and what they mean to you. Standing waves are a wave in a media, be it a string in the case of a guitar, or a coax cable in the case of a radio system. They are a wave that, are, that is made up of two components. In this particular graphic that you're seeing, one of those components is the blue component that's moving to the right. The other component is the red component that's moving to the left. In the case of a guitar, the blue component runs down, reaches the end of the string for the guitar, is reflected back and comes back as the red component that runs to the other end of the string, then gets reflected back as the blue component and comes back, and then you have the where they overlap. When you combine those two, you get the black string, the black line, the black wave that you see in the animation. And in the case of a guitar, standing waves are great. That's what we want. We want that sound, that vibration. We need that standing wave to get out of the guitar what it is that we want. Whenever you're talking about radios, we want the opposite. We don't want a standing wave. Because standing wave means the 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 more the higher the standing wave ratio, the more power that is trapped in the media that is between point A and point B or the radio and the antenna in this case would be the coax cable. A high standing wave is a bad thing when it comes to an antenna setup. If you think of this animation as a coax cable, and you think of off the left-hand side there is a radio, off the right-hand side there is an antenna, and we are pushing power, that blue wave, we are pushing that blue wave's power down that coax cable. It's reaching the antenna, and instead of going out the antenna, instead of going out into the air, something's happening to it and it's reflecting back and it's coming back to us back towards the radio as the red wave this is very bad this is not what we want so the standing wave ratio is a measure of how efficient your antennas are it lets you know how much power you have being reflected back from the antenna point back towards your radio the more power that you have reflected back towards your radio the less power leaves the antenna the way you want and radiates into the air. So in the case of amateur radio, commercial radio, anything involving radio, the standing wave ratio is very important to us. Okay, what you see here is the face of an analog SWR meter. The meter, the, you see the two needles, the orange needles down there at the bottom. The left hand needle is going to measure forward power the right hand needle is going to measure reflected power. The two of them together where they cross is going to give us the standing wave ratio for the antenna that we are currently using. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the antenna I am currently using is a mag mount mobile antenna that is not tuned very well. It's alright but it's not great. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot some power down it I've already identified with my call sign and let them know that I am doing antenna testing. So uh, that part's out of the way. Here we go. Okay. Now what you just saw was about 0.6 on the reflected and about, run it again here, right at seven give or take on the forward power now this is measured in watts so I'm currently pushing about seven watts out and I'm getting about 0.6 of those watts reflected back at my radio and they cross at about an SWR of 1.7 somewhere in that 1.7 range 1.7 1.8 that's really not a good SWR but it's not a horrible SWR it could be a whole lot worse and the antenna works decently well for what I need to use it for. So, all in all, it's not too bad. But as you can see, we have a measurement here, and we are measuring 
the forward power on the left hand side, the reflected power on the right, and whenever I key it up, you can see that I'm that there's a lot more forward power than there is reflected power. So that means that power is going somewhere. And the somewhere is out being radiated from the antenna. Okay, here is the formula that can be used to calculate the standing wave ratio. And it's pretty straightforward. P sub F is your four power in watts. That's how much you're pushing from your transmitter. Whenever you key down your radio, that's how much it's, your radio is putting out. P sub R is how much is being reflected back from the other end of the coax. That's what, you know, you push that signal down and you'll have a certain amount of it come back, just like we saw on the little analog meter. That's what that is a measure of. So let's, let's do a couple here. Let's, let's start out, let's assume best case scenario. Let's assume 100% of the power we push down that coax is radiating out the antenna. Now, this is never going to happen. This is an ideal case, but it is never going to happen in the real world. There will always be losses. There will always be very small reflections. You can't get away from it. Every junction that you have, every connector that you have, is going to be a spot that reflects a small amount back or absorbs a small amount or something. But we'll just go with the math for an ideal case. I pick 16 watts because that's going to make the math really easy. So we're pushing 16 watts from our radio. We're getting nothing back in a reflection. So let's go ahead and plug those into the formula. Do a little bit of simplification. And it all boils down to a standing wave ratio of 1. That is a perfect standing wave ratio in terms of radio stuff. Whenever you're dealing with radios, a standing wave ratio of 1 is perfect. That means that everything you're shooting down is radiating somewhere out of that antenna. That's what we want. Again, that's an ideal case. You're never going to see that in the real world. Let's go with an absolute worst case that you actually can almost see in the real world. You're not going to see it exactly, but you're going to see it really close in the real world. If you don't hook an antenna to your radio and you try to key your radio up. In this case, we're shooting 16 watts down. We're getting 16 watts back. Plug those into the formula. And you are left with... Now, yes, technically, you can't have 8 over 0. That is meaningless. The limit as that lower number, as that denominator, approaches 0 is infinity. That's what we mean by this. But the gist of it is the standing wave ratio that you have in this case of 100% of, of that power being reflected back at you is infinity. It is the highest possible standing wave ratio that you can do in, unless you, there is something else acting upon the system. So as long as there is only one transmission source in the system, this is a worst case scenario. Now you can actually see this if you take and just have your radio and don't actually have an antenna attached to it or a terminator or a or anything. If you don't have any kind of a dummy load or terminator or or <clears throat> or antenna hooked to your radio and you key it up, this is what you're doing. What that means is that all the power coming out of your finals in your radio is reflecting off the connector or off the coax or whatever is on the back of your radio and going right back at the finals in your radio. It is entirely possible for you to fry your radio if you do this because those finals may not be able to handle the power. Let's go ahead and jump over to what we saw whenever we were using the analog meter. Now the analog meter, we were getting 7 watts out of that radio. We were seeing 0.6 watts reflecting back at us. And let's go ahead and plug those in. 
I'm not going to do the 7 watts is an estimate, the 0.6 watts is an estimate, so I'm going to go ahead and do the math, assuming that, that they are estimates. And plugging those through the calculations, simplifying the fraction that we've got, we find a standing wave ratio of 1.82. Now that's really close to what we saw on the meter. That's probably actually what the meter was reading was about the 1.8 range because it was a little higher than 1.7. So the antenna that I have, with the radio that I have, on the frequency that I was using, I was getting a standing wave ratio of 1.82. And that 1.82 tells me that my 7 watts that I'm pushing out, I'm getting 0.6 of those watts back. The downside is I'm getting some of that power back. But you're always going to get some of that power back. The upside is that it means that there are 6.4 watts that were radiating out of my antenna. So I'm pushing 7 watts down the cable, and 6.4 watts are radiating out of my antenna. So that's not horrible. That's still a decent amount of power. And that actually, that antenna works pretty good so far, knock on wood. I haven't had any trouble with it and the radio. I've not had any difficulty communicating with anybody I want to communicate with. But I hope after this that you guys get some kind of an understanding of what standing wave ratio is, what standing wave ratio means. The simplest term, standing wave ratio, is a measure of antenna efficiency. Now, that's not always true. You can actually get a standing wave ratio of 1 or close to 1. You won't get exactly 1, but you can get really close to 1 by just putting a dummy load on your, on your radio. A dummy load is just a resistor. That's all it is. But it means that instead of that power, that, that wattage that you're pushing down, radiating out the antenna and into the air, it's turning, being turned into heat through the resistance of the dummy load. So while your radio is pushing 7 watts down and getting almost nothing as a return, you're not actually transmitting anything to the world because it's all being eaten by the heat. The power has to go somewhere. But for the most part, you can ignore the resistance whenever you're doing these calculations unless you're dealing with really, really thin coax and really, really high frequency, and then the resistance just eats it up. Uh, or if you're dealing with, uh, it, it really depends on what you're dealing with, but for the most part, you could ignore the resistive aspect of it and just focus on the reflection from the antenna because the antenna is not in tune. And use these numbers, use a, an SWR meter, and calculate how efficient, how tuned your antenna is for the frequency that you want to run on.